we are going to discuss about few of the important terminology in machine learning so whatever terminologies we are going to discuss today we are going to make use of those terms during our discussions right so please understand those terms carefully so let's begin with the concept of inductive learning inductive learning so as we know if we are dealing with a supervised learning algorithm then we are having a data of the form x comma y we have seen this earlier we are having a data in the form of x comma y so what is x here x is the input and y is the label or the output right the prediction or the class if the problem is classification and also we have seen that whenever we say that we are building a model actually we are trying to define a function y equal to h of x given theta so this is a function that we would like to come up with to get the class or the prediction for the unknown data so whatever is the training data set provided in the form of x comma y where x is my input and y is the answer or the output okay so i am providing my system the data in the form of x comma y and we are actually trying to come up with a function h that will provide me this y okay so we can also think of that we have been provided with the examples like x comma h of x so x comma y and y is being given as a function h of x or a function of input x theta are the parameters required to build that model so in general we may say that or we may think of that we have been provided with a data like x comma h of x right now this is the data that has been provided what we would like to do is we would like to predict now or we would like to come up with a function h of x for any new example or any new sample provided to my system right and this is what our learning problem is and we say that this is the inductive learning so why we call it as inductive learning the meaning is we are given some data and we are trying to induct that data to come up with a function that will help me to predict the future data i'll repeat what we mean by inductive learning inductive learning actually tries to induct the data right to come up with a function and that function will help me to predict the future data right so in inductive learning unless we see many instances or many data points for a given problem it may not be possible for us to come up with a function h of x so i need to induct all the data right that has been provided and then it is possible for us to come up with a general function that will provide me or that will help me predict the future data also as i mentioned we need to have significant amount of data initially that i can induct into also i need to impose some restrictions also we are going to learn what we mean by those restrictions and all but at this instance 
please remember that we are inducting or we are trying to induct the data to come up with some kind of a function that will help me to predict the future observations okay and that is why we say that it is inductive learning and as we know we are having three basic tasks those can be performed by making use of this inductive learning we may have a classification task we may have a regression task and sometimes we may have a probability estimation task so what i mean by that we know if i am dealing with a classification task i am having the output or my function h of x will give me the discrete value as the output and that discrete value is actually describing the class of the instance or class of the sample okay so this discrete value may be if i am talking about binary classification means if i am having only two classes i may have a class 0 or class 1 if i am talking about multiple classes then i may say that i am having class 0 1 2 3 and so on okay so this classification task will always provide me a discrete output right in regression this function h of x will provide me some continuous value some real value so typically if say for example we have seen earlier one example of housing prices so in that case or in that particular ex uh, example we were about to get a value a price of the house so that price is not discrete that price is a continuous value so that problem comes under regression problem so given some input if my output of the function is giving me some value continuous value real value number then it would be a regression problem and sometimes we may have a probability estimation so what we mean by probability estimation in some situations we are expecting that our function h of x should give us the probability so what this probability is say for example i am having a classification problem let us assume that i am having a classification problem and i am having two classes say class 0 is there and class 1 is there so the algorithm will give me the output of the function h of x in terms of the probability so what is this probability that function will estimate that say for example i am getting the output as say suppose the output is say 92 or 0.92 okay so this is actually the output that is predicted by my algorithm 0.92 so what i mean by this 0.92 i will interpret this 0.92 as the chance that the sample under consideration belongs to class 1 is 92% or 0.92 is the probability that my sample belongs to class 1 right so obviously 0.8 is the probability that my sample belongs to sorry 0.08 0.08 is the probability that my sample belongs to this another class that is class 0 so this is how actually we interpret the probability estimations okay now based on these probabilities we may finally identify the class of the sample say for example we may describe some threshold so if the probability 
that estimates the likelihood for a particular class if that probability is say greater than 70% then definitely i declare that my sample belongs to that class say for example in this particular situation if i have got the output as 0.92 for class 1 then definitely it is greater than if my threshold is 0.7 that is 70% then definitely i'll say that my sample belongs to class 1 okay and i'll not say that my sample belongs to class 0 why because the probability estimation for class 0 is actually 8% that is 0.08 8% so definitely i'll declare that my sample belongs to class 1 because it is estimating the probability as 0.92 so this is what we mean by probability estimation so we are going to focus upon few such algorithms also those actually are predicting the probability as the output right so if you have any doubts please let me know any doubts so far may i proceed ma'am ma yes yes what is mean this uh, inductive learning then machine learning means is there any relation or what is that see machine learning is a broad term so in in machine learning there are several terms those are being used okay and one of the terms that is used in machine learning is inductive learning and typically inductive learning is used for solving the problems under supervised learning category right like problems classification regression and as i mentioned right now probability estimation so what this term actually means inductive learning given some data right given some data we are supposed to induct that data okay and we should come up with some function that will describe my data that but, will describe uh, why yes. they have given yes. different name it is already there na supervised learning this is intuitive means see uh, induction and deduction are two terms induction and deduction in induction what we do is we need to induce some data. right and what we expect actually is we should have all kinds of instances those are describing my data or those are describing my problem in fact right so unless i have all such kind of data and unless i induce that data unless i impose some kinds of restrictions it is not possible for me to come up with the solution and that is why such kind of a terminology exists this is similar to whatever we learned about supervised learning but typically why this term has been introduced because this inductive learning actually is having something additional that will be helpful for me to understand the concept i am inducting the data i want that all kinds of instances should be there in my data set so that i can induct that data and i can come up with some kind of a mathematical function that describes my data and not only i need to have the data but also i need to impose some kinds of restrictions some kinds of biases right to come up with that function we are going to discuss next what we mean by those restrictions and all but this is what the, yes uh means uh, do you have any means uh, machine learning tree where you uh, you have given like inductive learning is there then supervised learning like this means branches of like no, this see see inductive learning is similar that we have discussed under supervised learning supervised learning is having various algorithms right so under supervised learning what we have what kind of algorithm we may have under supervised learning we may have linear regression right we may have polynomial regression 
we may have simple regression we may have multiple regression we are having logistic regression we are having decision tree algorithm we are having artificial neural network we are having svm so lots of different algorithms are available to discuss or to come up with the solutions by making use of all those algorithms right we need to have certain kind of methodology certain kinds of certain kind of learning and this typical learning this typical mechanism of learning is known as inductive learning and the reason i just mentioned because i need to enter lots of data and see for example why why i am emphasizing this right i if i want to go for a learning algorithm of such kind i need to have the data from say for example if i'm looking at the classification problem or if i'm solving the classification problem unless i have the initial data set training data set that includes the data related to all classes it would not be possible for me to come up with a good function h of x that will describe my data so in inductive learning this is a synonym for the supervised learning you may say so in inductive learning what we are expected to do is come up with the data considering all kinds of instances in that data and induct that data along with some kinds of restrictions some kinds of biases and then only we may look at that problem as the learning problem from where it is possible for us to derive a prediction function h of x and once we get this h of x it would be possible for us to come up with a label for unknown unseen data x right so this is just kind of you may imagine that this is a terminology that is being used in machine learning popularly and inductive learning uh comprises of some data and inductive learning means to come up with a general function to come up with a general function from all those training examples right so in inductive learning our motive is to come up with a generalized function that will be suitable for all kinds of samples those are not even seen yet right and that is why we use such kind of a terminology that is inductive learning so ultimately we are predicting something for unknown data and to come up with this h of x we need to induct some data right to come up with a model or to come up with a mathematical function h of x right so please just think of that this is the alternative term okay and it is having some meaning like mm -hmm. inducting the data and coming up with a generalized function h of x that describes the data and also this needs to impose some kind of restrictions also we are going to discuss it later or in a while we are going to focus upon what kinds of re restrictions we may have okay may i proceed yes ma'am so the next concept that we are actually discussing is the next term and that is features so when solving any machine learning problem as i mentioned we need some data and that data is related to the instances the examples the objects the samples right those we are working with so typically if i want to describe any instance i'll be making use of the features so what we mean by features features are are actually the properties that describe each instance features are the properties 
that describe each instance. So what we mean by that? Let us take one example. We have seen this housing data set earlier. Okay? And this housing data set is having five attributes or five properties. What are those five properties? It is having size of house, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, and one more attribute, whether the house is newly renovated. And the fifth attribute is the price. Okay? So, price is actually the output we have seen. This is why. And the first four attributes are actually describing this X. Right? So, whatever we are saying, this X. X is my input. So, every house, one row is describing one house. So, one house is in this scenario, one house is one instance or one example or one sample in my data set. And this one house is being described by making use of these four features. So, size of house is one feature, number of bedrooms another feature and so on. So, every house is described by making use of these four values. So, these four values or these four are actually the features, those are describing my instance. So, features are the properties that describe each instance. So, for every house, I am having these four properties. Are you getting me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, let us see now what we mean by a feature vector. So, if you look at this example, every house is being described with four features. So, these four values together comprise one feature vector. Right? We know what we mean by a vector. In a vector, we are having the set of values. So, if in this particular example, if I collect those four values for one house, then I am having this feature vector that describes one house. So, every house is now being described with a feature vector of size 4. Am I correct? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Fine. So, if I am having 4 features, then my feature vector is of size 4. If I am having 10 features describing one instance, then I will say that my feature vector will be a one dimensional vector of size 10. If I am having 100 features describing one instance, I will say that I am having a feature vector which is one dimensional and the size of the feature vector is 100. Right? So, this is how every instance is being described in terms of features. Right? And n number of features actually comprise a feature vector of size n. I hope you have understood the concept features and feature vector. Okay? So, let's proceed with the next terminology, feature space. Okay? Now, as I mentioned, we are having now a feature vector that is describing one instance, one observation. Okay? Now, we know that our function y is a function of input. That is a function of x. And what is this x here? This x is actually my feature vector. x is my input. Okay? 
so let us assume for simplicity let us assume that we are having two features in my feature vector x so x is now a feature vector that describes the data that describes the sample okay so for simplicity let us assume that this feature vector comprises of two features x1 and x2 are you getting me yes ma'am okay so this x1 feature x1 is having some range of values and this feature x2 will also have some range of value okay so whatever right now you are looking at right it's called as a feature space so what is a feature space feature space actually is properties that describe the problem so here are two properties x1 and x2 those are describing my problem and every property this x1 is one property x2 is another property so x1 is one feature x2 is another feature and all those features are having some range of values so if i look at this diagrammatically that i am having two features x1 and x2 with some range of values then whatever is this two dimensional picture that i am looking at on my screen is a feature space and right now in this particular example as i am having only two features x1 and x2 i am saying that this is a two dimensional space two dimensional feature space but in practice in real world applications one object one sample one observation or one example is being described by many number of features so i may have 10 features 50 features 100 features and so on so if i am having n number of features those are describing my instance then i will have a feature space of n dimensions it is not possible to visualize a feature space with n dimensions at the max we can visualize a feature space with three dimensions if i am having one more x1 x2 and x3 then it would be possible for me to visualize a 3d space right but if i am having n number of features let us assume that one instance is being described by 100 different properties then my feature vector will comprise of 100 elements and i'll be having 100 dimensional space and it would not be possible for me to visualize that 100 dimensional space but just imagine that how many features we have we are having a feature space of that dimension okay and with respect to the value of every feature right for that particular example i am describing that example in the feature space say for example suppose i am having the value of x1 as 2 and value of x2 as 1 then i am having here this example so this example this is one example in my data set and that i am describing by making use of this two dimensional feature space so in this feature space i am having this one example and it is having value of x1 as 2 and value of x2 as 1 so this is one instance in my feature space this is one instance in my feature space so if i have here one more instance so how i am going to describe this instance in this two dimensional feature space i'll be describing this instance in this feature space as x1 equal to say 0.5 and x2 equal to say 2.5 are you getting me 
Yes, ma'am. So, what is feature space? Feature space is nothing but describing a space wherein we are considering all the properties that describe the problem. So, if my feature vector is of size n, I'll be having n-dimensional feature space, right? So, every point, every observation is a data point in that feature space, okay? So, I'll be focusing more on this. See here, what we have, we are having several instances in this feature space. So, this feature space is two-dimensional feature space, okay? And if you look at, there are some positive samples and there are some negative samples. Okay, so these are the data points. So positive data points and negative data points. So data points are from two classes. And here we have depicted those data points in my data set. As it is two dimensional, every data point is described with two features x1 and x2 okay so if i look at this point this positive sample this is instance or a sample or it is also called example so if i want to describe this sample how i am going to describe this sample with respect to the values associated with every feature so here we are having feature x1 so, x1 value is 0.5. We are having another feature that is x2. So, x2 value is 2.8. And the label associated with this data point is positive. So, this is the label. Okay. So, this is my x. These two values comprise my vector x. So, this vector x is having two features. x1 and x2. And this is my y. This is my label associated with the sample. So I hope you must have understood the concept. May I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Fine. So as I mentioned, instance, sample, example is a point in the feature space. Okay, right now whatever we are visualizing is a two-dimensional feature space. If I am having n features describing one instance, then I will be having n-dimensional feature space. Okay, so let's proceed with the next term and that is the hypothesis. So what we mean by hypothesis? Suppose... This is our problem definition. So we are having those many instances in my training data set. Let us assume that in my training data set, I am having those many samples. And those samples belong to two classes, positive class and negative class. Okay? Now, I am having these many samples in my training data set. And suppose... I am having this question mark. These question marks are the samples. Those are unknown. I do not know the class of these samples. So question mark represent the sample which is unseen. For which I do not know the class. Okay. Now I have a training data set with me. Meaning I am having few examples for which I know class and now based on this knowledge I would like to predict the class of these unknown samples denoted here as the question marks okay now if this is what I want to do so right now my feature space is two dimensional every sample is being described with two features x1 and x2 I am having several samples with known class with me and now I would like to predict the class of few samples. So what should I do? 
So this is my learning problem. Okay. So if I want to solve this problem, what needs to be done? What should I do? So we are having here one term that is the hypothesis. So what we mean by that? These question marks are actually the test samples for which I want to predict the class, whether it is a positive or whether it is a negative. So what I need to do is, I need to come up with some mathematical function. Say for example, I am having this mathematical function. This pink line is my mathematical function. This function is describing a line. Okay? So, I may come up with this line and I will see that this line that is discriminating two classes, positive class and negative class. Claim that is towards left side. That sample will be positive and whatever is towards right hand side of line, that would be a negative class sample. Correct? So, whatever is this line that I have drawn, this pink line, is actually a mathematical function that I have derived. And this mathematical function that has been used for labeling the examples or for classification, I will say that it is a hypothesis. So, what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is a function that is used to label the examples, that is used to label the samples. So, I may predict now that this question mark or this sample is positive, this sample is also positive, this sample is negative and this sample is also negative. Why? Because these two samples lie towards left of this line and these two samples lie towards right hand side of the line. This line is my hypothesis. Right? So, I have come up with some mathematical function that help me to label the samples. And how I have computed this line based on whatever training data I have. Am I clear? If you have any doubts, please let me know. Any doubts? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is there any doubt? No, ma'am. Have you understood the concept? Ma'am, can you speak a little bit slow? Okay. So, may I explain once again what I mean? Uh, yes, ma'am. Fine. So, I hope you must have understood what is feature space. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The next term that we are discussing is the hypothesis. So, we have been provided with some training data. And what we have in our training data, we are having some samples. Those are annotated having the labels, okay? In our example, every sample is being described with two features, X1 and X2. So, whatever you are looking at, positive and negative, those are the samples, okay? And in fact, these are the annotated samples. What do we mean by that? And sample, this is the sample in my training data set. So, X1 value is 0.5 and X2 value something is say 0.8. So, this instance is being described with these two values. 
So I know these two values, and also I know that this belongs to positive class. So this is how we are having number of samples in my training data set. Meaning, I know the class of that. So that I am having that data. What I want to do, having knowledge of some data belonging to positive and negative classes, I want to predict now the class for some unknown data, unknown sample. So these question marks actually are representing the points in this feature space. For which I want to predict the class. For which I want to know the label, whether these points belong to positive class or whether they belong to negative class. And how I am going to do that? I will be making use of whatever training data set I have. Okay? So, I will be using some method and I will be deriving some mathematical function based on that training data. Okay? So let us assume that I have come up with this line, linear function. Okay? So if I look at this particular line, then it is possible for me to segregate the samples, to distinguish the samples. No doubt, there are some errors, but still, I have found out this line and now I'll say that this is my hypothesis. So what we mean by this hypothesis? This hypothesis is actually a function that will help me to label the exam. So how I'm going to interpret this hypothesis? I'll be saying that if the sample lies towards left hand side of this function, then I'll call this sample as, and if the sample lies towards right hand side of this line, then I will call this sample as the negative sample. So I'm having some mathematical function with me. So this is a line and typically this line, any line is described as y equal to mx plus c. Am I right? y equal to mx plus c. This is the form of a line. Okay, so I have come up with this mathematical function y equal to mx plus c and now I am saying that it is possible for me to describe the samples or to predict the samples belonging to two different classes. So this is what we mean by a hypothesis. Any doubt? Have you understood the concept? No, yes, ma'am. Fine. Now, I'm just related with this hypothesis. I'm just introducing one more term and then we'll stop. Okay? So, we know now what is hypothesis. So, hypothesis is a function that will help me to label the examples. Now, if I look at this feature space, right, I have come up with one hypothesis, one line, okay? But possible, so, or it might be possible that I am having many different kinds of hypothesis, right? Right now, I have picked up this line. But it is possible that I may have such kind of a line or I may come up with such kind of a line. It is possible. So it is possible for me actually to have many different of many different kinds of hypothesis. Right? So I am having one more term, hypothesis space. So, hypothesis space is actually the set of legal hypothesis that I may have. So, I may come up with n number of hypotheses, n number of different lines. Those actually may segregate my data into classes. 
So if I collect all those hypotheses together, I'll be having a set of hypotheses. And this set of hypotheses is called as hypothesis space. Okay? So it is not mandatory that I should come up with only one line. I may have this line. I may have this line. Okay? So I am having for this problem, I may come up with some hypothesis space. So I am the set of hypothesis, set of lines. Right? So this is what my hypothesis space. And what we do actually is, if I am having lots of lines, then I should pick one line that is most suitable, that is most optimal. Right? And how? That is what we are going to learn in this course. Right? So we need to come up with the algorithms. We need to use the algorithms to come up with some optimal hypothesis for a given problem. Correct? So I hope I am able to convince you few of the terms. Those are popularly being used in machine learning. The first term that we have gone through is the inductive learning. Next, the features, feature space, hypothesis, and hypothesis space. Right? I hope you must have understood those concepts. In the next session, we are going to focus more upon these terms and few more terms related to whatever we learned today. Is there any doubt? Yes? Is there any doubt? No, ma'am. Okay. So we are going to conclude this session today. And we will continue our discussion in the next session. I will be posting one link for today's quiz. So you are supposed to submit that quiz. Okay? So if you have any doubts, please let me know. Otherwise, we are going to conclude this session. Thank you.